So this is uh, the best MMO features and systems I'd like to see in other games by Dying Legacy. And let's take a look. I'm not really sure what he would bring up, especially since he has Warframe up. There's a lot of systems with Warframe. I do not want to see in other ones. What I do like is the whole modding of your abilities. Like that, I think Warframe did that probably one of the best in any MMO. Warframe's not an MMO, but any game I've ever played. Like you can completely change up how your abilities work with the modding system that they have in place. Like it's crazy. The features and playstyle so cool. of an MMO completely cement and define if it's fun, accessible, and above all else, capable of retaining a player base. Sure, we're used to the choice of PvE or PvP, but we as players look far beyond the content itself for our gameplay and features that immerse us in the world and connect us to the gameplay That's with true. activities such as milking cows or taking a break from solving the world's problems through excessive violence or tedious fetch quests to play a card game in the local tavern. Well, that's exactly what my list is about. My top favorite gameplay features, additions, and mechanics that add an element of fun and- I really don't care when they add card games in games. I rarely ever get involved with them. Because if I want to play a card game, there's way better ones outside of the game. Benefits to our favorite MMOs. Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Dying Legacy and I play a wide range of MMOs to fill the dark, gaping chasm of my soul that your regular FPS or fantasy True. game can't fill. Fill me, damn it! With joy, I mean. Phrasing. Anywho. Uh, number one. Here. The job system in Final Fantasy XIV Online. Absolutely, yeah. Or the how Final Fantasy XIV does their classes. A large portion of us have a main character we like to use and play the most on. A character where we try to enjoy and participate in as much content as possible that a game has to offer. But a lot of games have multiple classes or roles such as tanks and healers, rogues, warriors or mages. And as much as we tend to stick to one single class or form of play, we do like to try other classes and roles that yep. tend to require us to make a new character, which results in us dividing our attention among multiple characters that could take time to play and level. It's also not just that. It's usually, um, you don't want to, have to redo things you had done on your main character over and over again. So, uh, like, a lot of times you can unlock things with the main character and then you can just do, like, dungeon runs only on your ult. That in time, you may not even end up fully playing because you find yourself so far behind the game's current content that could be locking your alternative character out of said content because you're not in a position to get level appropriate gear or haven't enough time on some form of power related system. In Final Fantasy XIV, yeah. this isn't a problem as the job system allows you to use any role or class, swapping and changing as you feel fit. And because it's all situated on one character means you're never really locked out of content or really behind and it adds an extra layer of accessibility by switching roles and classes with a touch of a button. So you can fill a position in your raid group that your team might be lacking. Missing a DPS, then switch to a DPS. Down a healer, then switch to a healer. This cuts down on you dividing your attention yep. among multiple characters by letting you play your character however you want, having every achievement or collectible gotten along the way, tied to you at all times. Never having to worry about getting a mount that matches your class perfectly, and never having to skip on raid progression because your character's role is always filled. Number two, the leveling process with RuneScape. RuneScape doesn't do conventional leveling like, Skyrim, like World of Warcraft right? or Guild Wars 2, nor does it have roles such as tanking or healing. Everyone starts out equally as a nobody adventurer, barely able to feed themselves, let alone defend themselves. The entire leveling process is completely dependent on your style of play, skills increasing as you use them that contribute to your overall level. If you fish, you get better at fishing and your level rises to match that. If you decide to cook that fish, you'll then start to improve yeah, how like well Skyrim. you cook. Same goes for mining, woodcutting, even thieving. Combat is done in the same way with learning how to block, slash, or even lunge. Your character I think a lot of people would like that. the increase of these skills. Tying with like how popular Skyrim is, like I would assume most people would be okay with it at the very least. Lead to your character in a more meaningful way, rather than your typical kill X and Y, gain X amount of XP, and hand in a quest to get x amount of xp until your max level instead opting to level and progress with your style of play number three the modding system of warframe oh exactly what i was saying man if you've played warframe you know exactly what this means modding in warframe and not like add-ons or anything like that but modifying modifying your abilities like you can change up anything you can almost think of like the range of the ability the strength of it and that goes like vice versa. You can shorten the range or you can make the ability weaker, but it doesn't just like weaken it exactly. 
but it reverses the effect. So for example, if you have an ability that slows them down, if you weaken it to a point it goes into the negative, it will then speed the monster or the enemy up, which doesn't sound good, but there are some um, scenarios where, you know, you want things to run faster so you can, you know, kill them quicker. They run to you quicker. The mod system of Warframe really dictates the overall strength, usability, yep. and purpose of weapons, Warframes, companions, and even your own personal battleships. Not only is it technically your progression system, it's the basis of your overall strength. Mods come in the form of cards that can be gotten from almost every facet of content, from quests, reputation, enemy drops, and even... Just really annoying to level them up. Just from destroying random crates and world destructibles, and can be upgraded to become stronger. The system itself is very straightforward. Find cards, make cards stronger, put them on items, and you do yep. better. But obviously, it's a lot deeper than that. Cards synergize with each other. Cards can combine two different cards into one and have equip costs, meaning yeah. you can be creative and create your own playstyle, as well as building yourself up to take on a wide range of situations. Like, I think Warframe probably had more builds than any game I've ever seen that were actually viable, unlike Path of Exile, where there's a ton of them, but most of them are just not going to get you anywhere. From pure damage to being tanky, or even down to how efficiently you can grind for items and drops. The mods themselves yeah. are deeply connected to the economy of the world as well, with players trading among... So this is what I was talking about. If you see here, in duration, like there are some skills that will last uh, a while. Either it's like a debuff or just like frost on the ground, whatever it may be. Efficiency is, I believe, the mana cost. Uh, range is, of course, just what it sounds like in strength. As I was saying, like he has 199%, but you can do the negatives for almost all of these, from what I understand. Each other and building. I think, except for duration. Because a lot of times when you get into the negatives with efficiency, it corresponds with more strength or more range. The bulk of their overall wealth through them. When playing Warframe, you will spend the bulk of your time trying to gather as many different types. Yeah, this one like uh, changes up an ability that instead of um, consuming energy, you're going to consume HP instead. Like that's... And every single skill like has stuff like this. Of these mods as possible. Number four, World of Warcraft Transmog Collection. Absolutely. This is actually, system. yeah, would have to Games agree. like Final Fantasy XIV or even The Elder Scrolls Online do customization to a greater and more creative degree, but World of Warcraft does one it's aspect of character of clothing customization better yep. than any other, and it's the collection system. In games like Final Fantasy XIV, you're limited in how many clothing items and appearances you can have on the fly. Which is a shame, and I know they talked about it, the developers of Final Fantasy XIV, in that the spaghetti code is just so bad that they just can't implement the system which tells me they just need a new system to be fair like if you can't do something like that like what else is st like stopping innovation with this uh current engine and code as they are limited to storage and safe space meaning you eventually have to delete or discard your appearances to make room for newer or more sought after items that you want to use the appearances of and in games like the elder scrolls online where you don't have a limit on the appearances you can gather and keep you have to grind and buy the appearances separately to the items that use them which a lot of the time have a vastly That's lower drop rate weird. that can be costly or time consuming to get your hands on world of warcraft on the other hand is extremely simple and much better you buy loot or craft a piece of armor or weapon bind it to yourself and automatically unlock the appearance indefinitely to apply yep. to your character at any time no space restrictions no extra hoops to jump through short and simple and a completionist wet dream and a sure way to get you to explore every nook and cranny of the world number five black desert online's quest arrow and breadcrumb trail really I didn't even think about this. I played Black Desert a little bit, but I don't remember this being particularly good. This is a two for one. First off, the quest arrow, which is a very simple quality of life addition. When tracking a quest or task, an arrow will be displayed around your character, pointing directly to your next objective, meaning you could just straight up follow it without having to check your location on a map constantly or having to. It is nice. Yeah, because I think WoW has an add on that I, I use that does the same thing. Correct your course. On top of that, it's not very intrusive, neatly circling around your character. This also ties into its second quality of life addition, the breadcrumb trail. When using the map, you can mark a quest or position or anything you want really, as, as markers tend to do. 
You can then auto run to that marker. Your character will follow the trail, plotting a course with the least obstruction and obstacles, meaning you can take time away from your keyboard as your character makes their way automatically. I think this works with any MMO that doesn't have a mount system or like a flying mounts kind of thing. In a game that does In Guild Wars 2 also, they don't, I mean, they have flying mounts too, but they also have like the mounts that traverse terrain differently. It doesn't have a dedicated fast travel. This feature is almost a necessity, but would also be a hell of an addition to any other game. Number six, Guild Wars 2 traversal mechanics. Yeah, I was going to say like with the Black Desert one, actually, I don't really, I don't think it's that big of a deal whether a game has that or not. I don't think it makes any real difference, uh, but definitely Guild Wars 2's mounts. Like, absolutely. Guild Wars 2. Like, they are the game you want to look at if you're trying to, like, put mounts in your uh, in your game. It's a huge emphasis on exploration and travel. It's where the yeah. brunt of your leveling and experience gain comes from. It's how you find skill points and mastery points to progress and strengthen. Plus, Guild Wars 2 has a massive map to boot. So with that comes methods of travel and traversal that go beyond just getting from A to B. With mounts that can travel through portals of sand, gliders, trampoline mushrooms, fishing boats, and even a fully-fledged tank. The mounts in Guild Wars yep. 2 are far more tank. than just traveling. The fishing boat is the only way to fish on open water. The jackal is capable of getting to regions and areas inaccessible by foot by being able to use sand portals. And the raptor is capable of using attacks and AOEs to help open encounters as well as jump large distances. Mounts don't have to be just fashion accessories or gauges of content progression. They can expand upon the world and have meaningful use in the content that I would love to see in other games too. Number seven, the Elder Scrolls Online's class build system. ESO's class builds. I don't recall this being particularly good. By far, one of the most creative systems when it comes to character progression and strength in an MMO is the Elder Scrolls Online's use of gear and skill choices. On one hand, every skill in the game comes with branching paths of evolution, increasing the skill's use or even changing how it works entirely, with a vast array of choice with a limited amount of slots to use at a time. Matched with a vast array of gear sets that can be mixed and matched to create builds and Okay, yeah, like, the base of it, though, isn't that good, but it becomes just way, way, way better once you factor in the tier sets. Because um, they have actually a ton of tier sets in ESO. So I would actually kind of disagree with the first part. The first part, to me, isn't that important, or why it is so good. I think it's the fact that ESO has so many tier sets that can just change up the whole build. And, like, you can create builds around the tier set. Which is what I think is where the uh, satisfaction comes in for this. And characters with varying and adaptable forms of play for everyone. Catering for every form of content and situation from PvE yeah. to PvP to solo. Develop and create a character for any role or combat style from straight up powerhouses to uncatchable thieves. The main premise and allure of the Elder Scrolls... The only problem with this um, is that there is a pretty big disparity between bad builds and good builds like a good build character can take on like three to four bad build characters with the same level of gear um uh, which which feels bad online is the creativity you bring to the table no way is the right way there's only your way number eight the gathering and crafting a new world my sole oh, reason yeah. for liking this system so much is that I'm a big fan of survival and crafting games. Seeing trees fall down when chopping them and seeing diverse forms Absolutely. of herbs and foliage spread. New World did, like, you could say whatever you want with New World. It did its gathering system absolutely the best. Out and localized to certain locations, biomes, and habitats, even the act of fishing has a little more thought to it than just clicking one button prompt to accomplish a catch, which makes the whole idea of gathering a lot less tedious, and it lends itself very well to the crafting system with everything having a need and purpose across many forms of professions and skills. You can milk cows also, so there's that. To me, these are the features and mechanics that sets these MMOs apart from others, and some of the reasons why these yeah. MMOs have as many players That's as true. they do in such a heavily saturated MMO market, where very few MMOs... I don't know about WoW's transmog, but it's definitely, like, one thing that WoW did extremely well. ...was actually succeed. But this is just a list of my favorite features, and it's really just an opinion. And I am extremely curious to hear your thoughts and your favorite features, additions, or mechanics from your favorite MMOs. 
or maybe you disagree with my choice entirely, which I am just as curious about. So comment below and tell me your thoughts and share your favorites. And maybe I'll make a new list with features I either never thought of or from games I had never Yeah, I mean, like, the only one I would disagree with is the BDO one. Like, everything else, I think, is totally fair. And the BDO one is not that I disagree with, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. Like, auto running and the low arrow. I don't know. It, it would be, like, it's a nice quality of life thing, but that's about as far as I would take it. And the Elder Scrolls, I would disagree on why it's good. I think it's mainly good because of the tier system, uh, the amount of tier sets in the game. Like, if you took that away, BDO's, like, class builds are actually pretty boring. Just... At least when I uh, played it. Everything else though, especially Warframe's modding, like I really wish more games um, did something similar. Because it's like deck building, but for your like whole class. Like it's just crazy how much you can affect your uh, character with. Like it's just, it was just so much fun messing with that. Yeah. Made me want to play the game again. <laughs> Honestly. Let's see here. Leveling process with um for runescape i think you could have used skyrim as a better example uh, even though skyrim's not an mmo i mean more more people know how skyrim's leveling process works um but either way i mean yeah i mean i don't see why not i don't think it would make that big of a difference but it would be interesting just to see the job system in final fantasy 14 is considered by many to be the best version of it so i would definitely agree there Overall, really good video.